Everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. England 15, New Zealand 16. What a game of rugby we've just seen. The Scott Robertson era does begin with a win, but a sketchy one at, at best, to be perfectly honest. And arguably not the best team on the night. England leaving eight points out there behind the boot of Marcus Smith, David McKenzie, to be fair. Um, left, I think, four points and had was timed out. So missed seven points. So if they all been perfect off the boot, it actually have been a draw. Uh, which would have been quite interesting. But I do feel England probably the better side on the night, but New Zealand getting um, the win and clutching up when they needed to, especially that last sort of penalty, uh, Dalza Papali'i. But a very interesting game and uh, an interesting week ahead, I think, of analysing this game, seeing what was good from both sides and uh, seeing what, where they might move and progress to next weekend. Before we look at the game, please do smash a like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. Uh, it was a good start. Um, it, was a, it was a fast paced start. In fact, the entire game was actually played. The last 20 minutes, I think it got a little bit messy. But generally, the play was 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 played at a very um, high rate. So, for example, you know, a, a ruck speed of 0 to 3 seconds, 61% for New Zealand, kind of as expected. Um, England a bit slower. But um, it was an interesting game with regards to the way the sort of momentum sort of shifted throughout the game. Um, so, if you look at the points, uh, Sebu Reese got things going in the 15th minute. Um, Marcus Smith missed. Well, for me, it was a very uh, gettable penalty early on. Um, but what a try it was from um, from New Zealand, who, you know, found a couple of gaps, a couple of long passes, a couple of skip passes, some offloads, a very characteristic New Zealand ball-in-hand type of rugby. And um, that was very impressive. And then just creating all the space before the cross kick came in um, from David McKenzie to uh, Sebi Reese. So, yeah, it was it was proper New Zealand try. And you sit there going, oh, is this now the, the way they're going to play under Scott Robertson? You know, that attacking, exciting brand of rugby. Um, however, uh, England responded well. Mari Toja went over in the 20th minute to equal the scores with Marcus Smith adding the extra two after Dan McKenzie missed the first uh, um, conversion. Um, but uh, Artie Sevilla uh, went over, once again, going to the right wing, skipped past, plenty of space out wide. They looked to go wide quite quickly, did New Zealand. They did everything identified uh, and I think that's obviously, you know, also the Felix Jones effect. England coming with a bit of a rush defense, which I think is actually very good tonight. But I think it took a while to get going. I think the first sort of half wasn't their best. Um, so there was a bit of space there. Went to Ardi Sevilla out wide, who went over David McKenzie once again, missing um, the conversion. And then the All Blacks got a bit greedy, to be honest. They had a uh, 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 a penalty in the after the, uh, the, the, the time had uh, run out for the first half. And they kept playing inside their own half, trying to sort of see if they could score points. They ended up actually conceding a penalty right in front of polls. Marcus Smith then went and added the uh, the extra, got, got the three points there to square it at 10 points apiece at half time, uh, which gave England a lot of confidence. They then came back after half time and uh, were really strong. Got themselves a try of their own through Ferry Robosa um, in the 47th minute. And all of a sudden you think, well, this is, is it on here? Is England, you know, going to to do the, uh, the I wouldn't say the unthinkable, but the unlikely um, and then two penalties, 54 and 65 minutes. McKenzie adding the six points there, giving them a one-point lead. Um, he was actually timed out in the 78th sort of minute, uh, which gave England the chance to get into New Zealand territory and uh, try have a go, but uh, just not to be for England. If you look at some of the, 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 the stats, for example, very, very interesting. I think the England discipline was generally all right, but then got a lot worse as the game went by. Um, if we look at, for example, 22 entries, six apiece, um, England with two points per 22 entry, uh, New Zealand with 1.6, um, both teams scoring <coughs> uh, two tries apiece. Um, if we look at uh, possession and territory, for example, let's have a look at the stats and sort of see where some of the, the game was sort of won and lost. Uh, if we look at uh, the territory, 52% for England, and uh, but 44% uh, in the... Uh, last sort of 10 minutes um, of possession. Possession, 44%. Um, so New Zealand did have more of the ball, <coughs> but um, played in the outside their own half a lot. So I'll credit to the, the England defence for that. If you look at the attack, for example, obviously far more pass came from New Zealand, far more carries as well. Post-contact meters also a lot more. Uh, six line breaks to two, so you kind of expect that really. You look at the two sides, the way they play. Uh, turnovers won, though. Breakdown work with them. England was impressive. Seven turnovers won. Um, probably something that Scott Robertson will identify as a an area to improve on is protecting that ball a little bit better. If you look at the defense, I was very impressed with the English defense. 189 tackles made, 34 missed, 85%. But 
But again, you know, it's it's now, you know, especially with Felix Jones and these rush defenses, it's more about stopping the momentum. And as I say, I think in the first 10 to 20 minutes, that defense was a little bit leaky, but after that, it got much, much better. And New Zealand really struggled, actually, to find those line breaks and to find that momentum. Um, if we look at some of the top players, Ben Earl carried the most with 14 carries. Um, line breaks were pretty easy, not too many there. But uh, defensively, Jamie George, 19 tackles, good shift from him. Oli Lawrence with 18. Finn Baxter on debut um, with 15. On the attack, if you look at Meters Carry, for example, George, George Forbank uh, with 85. Emmanuel Ferro Aboso with 50. Stephen Perifito with a nice little step just uh, uh, before that try was really, really good. Um, but I think that if we're going to be perfectly honest, I think on a different day, Owen Farrell plays that game, for example, and kicks the way he does, England probably win. So it's 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 harsh on Marcus Smith, who, who had a try assist for his efforts. But I do think that his goal-kicking let him down t- today. And, and that's the difference when it comes to test match rugby. You know, if your goal-kicking isn't on point, you're going to struggle. And... Eight points left out there in a one-point game. That's the small margin that we talk about. Let me know what you thought about the game down in the comments below. Smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.